Hello, welcome to another edition of Crack and Cryptic, where today, um, almost for a change recently, we're going to look at the cryptic. Um, now, I have solved this puzzle uh, this morning, um, and I wanted to just talk through some of the uh, more interesting clues. Uh, there's one absolutely fantastic clue, uh, it's, I think it's 19 down, which was definitely my favourite from the puzzle. Um, but let's look at some of the uh, trickier ones. Forest primate getting energy from small parrots. Um, that wasn't that easy I didn't think unless we had an L at the start which which was in the end what, what gave it to me. I was thinking Lima but then I remembered um, the Loris which is a, a primate um, and that's lorikeets which can be shortened to lorries as in IES here without E for energy. Um, so if you struggle with that one, I don't blame you. I don't think that was that was terribly simple. Um, and there were a few examples actually of clues that, um, uh, that you know they needed a second thought really to get to the bottom of. This one was uh, I didn't really understand when I first solved it and had to come back to it. So seafood's twenty one shillings. Now um, I'm not old enough to remember shillings, but uh, I do know that there are twenty shillings in a pound. So I was looking at this, um, you know, I think I had a, maybe an S and maybe a D, so I can think of a, a seafood that goes in here, I'm sure you can too, but how to justify it? Um, so if I fill in the, the missing letters, we've got squid there, why? Well I think the idea here is that a pound is 20 shillings, um, but S, which would be quid obviously, but S is a valid abbreviation for the word shilling as well. So in effect, at 22 down now, we do have 21 shillings. We have this shilling here, plus another 20 shillings in the form of a quid. So we do have 21 shillings. And definitely the question mark at the end of the clue there, I think, is required. Um, because that's, um, uh, it's very inventive and I actually really like it, but um, not easy to see if you're trying to speed solve. Now 19 down, I say that's my favorite one, filling small cavities over time. Now. This is an example of a clue called an and lit clue. Uh, we've done uh, at least one video specializing on this type of clue. It's very unusual because the whole clue does two things. So normally uh, in a cryptic crossword clue, you'll find the definition either at the start or the end of the clue. Now here, the whole clue is the definition. Um, so one filling small cavities over time, you, you know, may come to up an image of the uh, uh, the answer you need, but also in an and lit clue, the whole clue also acts as wordplay as well. So, what's going on here? I'm going to put the answer in, or I'll put in a few letters, give you a chance to guess it if you if you haven't done the puzzle yet. So this is these were the checking letters you could get. So maybe read the clue now, treat it as a definition, see if you can think of something that might fit. And the answer, of course, is dentist. Uh, certainly somebody who would smell uh, fill some cavities over time. Um, but here we've got one, which is often used uh, to indicate the letter I, filling small cavities. So I is inside dents, D-E-N-T-S, which are small cavities. And that string of letters is all over this T here. T can be an abbreviation for time. So lovely lovely clue with the whole whole clue acting both as a definition and wordplay um, really stunning uh, which other ones did I want to talk about this one I paused for thought over this one hostility as I film buddy guard um, so what was unusual here was that the the word buddy guard is being used to indicate two letters uh, as in uh, Hitler's buddy guard I think but a buddy guard I always think of as a singular person rather than as a force of people um, and so what you need here is to realize that buddy guard I think is SS uh, as in Hitler's buddy guard the, the, the collective unit of those buddy guards um, and then a four letter word for a film well again not that easy a word the word cine um, and that Put all that together and you can get iciness which of course means hostility but um, I didn't think that was terribly simple. Um, now which other ones did I want to look at? 
going to be a bit of general knowledge there. Dismiss Ibsen character as a radical. Um, now, dismiss, that's not too difficult. Four letter word for dismiss. Beginning with F, I'll give you that one. That's the word fire. And once you've got the word fire in, it's you know it's not too easy, too difficult, sorry, to come up with a, a word here that means a radical. It's a fire brand. Brand uh, I knew of as a play by Ibsen, um, but Apparently a character in that play is, is called Brand, so Ibsen character there for Brand. I think it was an early play of Ibsen. Uh, a bit of general knowledge required if you were to pass that clue uh, completely at your first uh, first attempt through it. Um, which other ones should we just have a chat about? This was a funny word, funny or strange worded clue. Heater pipe filled with gauze regularly losing fragments. Um, now, the regularly losing fragments here is saying we need to remove regularly occurring letters from the word gauze. So fragments here is sort of being indicating uh, fragments of the word gauze. And certainly if you're anything like me, I, when I read this clue I wanted the answer to mean losing fragments or something like that, which uh, obviously wasn't helpful. But if we remove uh, the G, the U and the E from the word gauze, we get AZ and that's very helpful in terms of uh, filling the seven letters. So we know it's a heater, seven letter word for a heater containing an A and a Z and that may prompt you, especially if I give you a B at the start and an R at the end, we need to put an AZ in the middle of this, brazier, brazier, depending on your uh, pronunciation and then we've got briar which is a word for a pipe um, around the outside. Now that's the other clue I will just take a look at here, I think five down, um, this is tricky as well, topping sequin socks from America for a special date. Um, now it's not perhaps that easy to guess the answer here, if, we, if I give you an E at the start uh, we can see topping sequin. If I remove the first letter or top something, behead it, then I would get EQIN. Now, a special date beginning with this se sequence of letters, I'm sure we'd all write in Equinox pretty quickly. So, what's the rest of it referring to? Well, I think it's uh, socks from America can be spelled S O X, as in the Boston Red Sox. And we have to top that word as well, so there's sort of an indirect beheading of the word, uh, of the US word for socks there, which um, is quite an unusual thing actually to see that in a clue. Um, and uh, certainly when it's alongside a word which just needs to be beheaded without using a synonym first. So yeah, I think people could be forgiving, forgiven for wondering how to get the O and the X from that, that clue, even though the answer was pretty obvious in terms of, you know, once you, once you had EQIN in the grid, I don't think there are too many other words that would fit. Um, so, a nice puzzle today, um, not perhaps terribly difficult. There is a school of thought that says that Monday puzzles are perhaps the easiest of the week. Um, I thought this was just a classic times puzzle. Average difficulty, um, did everything you'd request of a times crossword, and I think it was pangrammatic as well. In fact, the answers I've picked out here, you can see that we've got a Z, a Q, an X, and, and another Q. Maybe it was a bipangram. I don't think it was. Um, but lovely puzzle. And um, we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.